What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of In the Trenches with Jake Cradle and Gavin Bartholomew. I am your host, Noah Hiles of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, coming to you on the Post-Gazette Sports Now YouTube channel and podcast network. We are one week in as far as creating shows goes. We're also one week in as far as the regular season goes. Pitt opened up its 2023 campaign with a 45-7 win Saturday at Acrisher Stadium over Wofford. These two guys, the ones on my left and right, had a big... Uh, say in that win, Jake Cradle, Gavin Bartholomew, just want to ask you both as we get started here, what were your initial takeaways on your individual performance and your team performance in the win over Wofford? You know, I thought uh, I thought it was a great win. It was a great team win. It was uh, it was what we kind of drew up, you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, you should we should be able to take care of these FCS schools and really, you know, do it in a big way. And it was great to get all the young guys out there, all the wide receivers, um, we got some, you know, offense linemen in there. You know, I think we played 10 or 11 offense linemen. You know, the running backs, I think we had three or four get carries, maybe five. I mean, so it's it's just great to get guys experience out there in the game, you know, come Saturday at Extra Stadium. So, you know, if their numbers are called, you know, they're ready. They're not, they don't have any, you know, guessing or, you know, oh, what's it feel like? You know, they got their experience. So it's, you know, that was great. And, you know, from a standpoint of, you know, my play, I thought I could have been, you know, cleaner in my calls and my IDs and stuff like that. But um, for the most part, you know, I, I was happy with my performance, but, you know, just got to build on it. Got to, you know, correct the mistakes, you know, see what we did good and, you know, see what we did bad and, you know, fix that for uh, this week coming up against Cincinnati. Yeah, no, it was a good week. It was good to get back out in the uh, Acrisure Stadium with the guys. But, um, I mean, we went out there and we did what we wanted to do, um, you know, against an FCS school like that, you know, that's what our expectation is, is that we should be able to do whatever we want. And um, that's kind of how the game went. And uh, like Jake said, it was good to get some young guys in there, um, see what they would do uh, in a game and how they'd react and stuff like that. So, but um, for my performance, I mean, I thought I, I played pretty good. I probably could have played a little better. Um, some things I got to clean up on and uh, moving forward. I think that's uh, my uh, interest, I guess. All right, so a couple of things I want to address before I have like three primary topics I want to cover about the game. Jake, you went down with a little bit of an injury there in the second half. Everything good on your end? Was that just cramping? Yeah, it was just cramping. I was uh, I was dehydrated. I uh, didn't drink enough water, I guess, the day of or the day before. But I mean, that's that's a, that's something I'll correct this week and hopefully, you know, be ready to go. You know, eighty snaps this week. So I was Gotta concerned. I thought I thought we were down a podcast co-host for a second. Oh, I didn't no. know what we were going to do. <laughs> I couldn't so, miss this for the world. And Gavin, I, I want to just talk to you, and I think this is actually a good way to start our first bullet point that I wanted to cover for the game. I, I think you're on the receiving end, I think, of the best offensive play of the day, which was the throw over the middle from Phil. Um, I want to just talk about what it was like for both of you guys to play your first game with Phil. You scrimmaged with them in the spring and the summer, all throughout camp. Uh, but this was against a different opponent. And we saw a lot of things that we didn't see last year from the quarterback play in, in week one. We saw a mobile quarterback. We saw a guy that wasn't scared to throw the ball over the middle. Uh, Gavin, just as someone who was a part of those those passes and to see the tight end position so heavily involved, what was that like for you? Uh, in, in game one with your new quarterback? I mean, it was awesome. It was a great uh, starting point, I guess you could say. Um, but, I mean, we've been working all camp. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of bringing it to the game. And uh, we rep it so many times. It's, like, drilled in our brain that, you know, it should be able to just transfer over, over easily, but sometimes it doesn't. And uh, on Saturday it did. And it was just one of those days where, you know, everyone was just out there having fun like it was a normal day in camp, uh, competing, going against another team, and uh, everyone was flying around, and it was it was a lot of fun. No, it was it was definitely great to have Phil out there, having him back on our our side of the ball. You know, like I said, we've we played that guy I think two times my college career, and I think he's had the better of us. So, um, so it was good to have him back there. And like you said, you know, he he brings a di like a different element. You know, we can do some QB sneaks like we did, you know, three or four times throughout the game, get a first down. You know, he used his legs. You know, he pulled that uh, inside zone, you know, I guess read whoever he was reading and, you know, made a great read and, you know, went for 35 yards and scored. And then, like you said, I mean, the big thing is just making throws over the middle. That's one thing I think we lacked last year. We didn't – we didn't really stretch the field and, you know, exploit defenses, you know. But I think this year, you know, it's something that we can, you know, hope Phil continues to do is, you know, just find Gavin down there, you know, 15, 20 yards over the middle and, you know, make some plays. So – 
I'm excited to see what he does against Cincinnati this week. What's Phil like in the huddle? Does he keep things loose or is he just confident and hyper focused? What's he like in the huddle from play to play? Um, I would say Phil. Phil is a he's a funny guy, man. He's a he's just like he's super <laughs> relaxed. Like nothing really gets to him. Nothing really fazes him. You know, he it's crazy because like you know you don't really know who someone is until like game day. You know, like how they like pre- you see how people prepare, but you don't see how they're gonna act in game day. And he just has like that uh, that killer mentality to him. You know, he's he's a guy that just he wants to go out there and just dominate his opponent, and he just he's just ultra ultra focused, and you know. It's it's just crazy the you know he's a great demand in the huddle you know he really you know demands everyone's respect and attention and it's just you know it's it's great to be out there with a guy like that that you know has that confidence in himself. Yeah, I mean he obviously leads the the huddle, but I mean like Jake said, he's a real relaxed guy. I guess you could say. I mean after that targeting call, I was like, you all right? Like he took a good shot there, and he's like, he's like, yeah, he didn't really say much. He was kind of like just like nonchalant about it just kind of avoided it like he was fine so i mean he's a tough guy um you know he's a leader and that's what he's going to do for this team gavin a question for you here his first eight completions were to eight different targets he completed not a passes to nine different targets throughout the entire game as, as a as a pass catcher you know wh- what's that like to see a guy come in and get everyone involved so early I mean, it's awesome. I mean, it's good for us, but it's also good for the team because, I mean, it's not like he's uh, just targeting one person. He's targeting everybody. So, I mean, you can't cover everybody. And uh, I forget when we were talking. We were on the bench, me and Carter. We were like, dude, like all the tight ends got a catch. And I was like, I was like, damn, you know, we do all have a catch. I had two. Carter had two. Epps had one. And Renda had one. And just to be able to spread the ball out like that, it's awesome because it keeps the team energized. You know, they never know when they're going to get the ball next because they know it's coming at some point. And um, it just keeps the, the team going and driving forward. So, I mean, you guys both, when I, when I started this off, you said, you know, you, you had a couple things you're looking to improve. As a team, what, what's the takeaway on, on what you guys need to improve, especially offensively? Uh, what, what, do you, what do you watch from that tape and say, we got to be better come Cincinnati game in this, in this area? Um, definitely. I think it's just, uh, like we didn't have many of this, but it's just, uh, pre-snap penalties. I think we had, you know, maybe two, but, uh, if we just, you know, get rid of those, I mean, that, that stuff that really kills you, you know, shooting yourself in the foot before the play even starts. So, I mean, eliminate those. And then it's just, it's just execution from everyone. I mean, and that's like kind of coach talk and stuff, but I mean, at the end of the day, like everyone has, you know, a task and assignment and, you know, we always stress like, assignment, alignment, technique, and fundamentals. And if everyone just applies those, you know, all of our indi- individual drills, you know, and applies it in the game, I mean, we'll be perfect. We just got to, we just got to, you know, I have to do a good job making the right calls, putting the, the line in the right position, and then everyone else just, we just got to execute. Yeah, like Jake said, I think it's all about the execution uh, to take away from the game because I feel like everyone knows what they're doing. It's just a matter of fact of whether you can do it or not. And if you did it, like, to the best of your ability – so I think just coming out with those takeaways are big and then uh, just moving them forward on the Cincy. All right. So I think that can conclude our Wofford talk. I, mean, I think other games we might spend a little bit more time breaking down the opponent uh, or the contest, but I feel like that, that game was pretty clean cut, you know, <laughs> simply put that that's, that was the expectation for you guys and, and it happened. So, um, Oh, one actual final question. What was the reaction on the sideline? on that Wofford touchdown. Obviously you got, you guys want, you want a shutout. And for that catch, we'll call it uh, to, to occur right in front of your sideline. The, the thing that occurred before that catch that resulted in that player being wide open. What's the reaction from your team on the sideline when that, when that unfolds? I'll tell you, I mean, <clears throat> I was disappointed because I thought it was an offensive PI. I was like, I mean, he clearly pushed off like, I'm not, I'm not a guy to make excuses or anything, but I mean, that's, that's where my head was. I was like, really? Like, you're not going to call that. Like there's a, he just thing it wide open by just, you know, running past them. He clearly pushed off, you know, created separation and, uh, you know, caught the touchdown. And it was just like, it was like, it wasn't devastating, but it was kind of like, you wanted to see the, the defense come out with, you know, giving up less than a hundred total yards. I mean, I think they gave up a total of like 127 or something. Yeah. But I mean, that would have been nice. Then we gave up. I think it was like sixty yards at the time. It was fifty. It was exactly. Yeah, it was 50. fifty yards at the time. Yeah. And I think uh, Pat Bossick said it best tonight at a Coach Dude's radio station uh, show. He said 
he said they had more penalty yards than they had total yards, you know, at the time of that play. And mm -hmm. uh, that would have been nice just for the defense, you know, to come out, you know, less than 60 yards given up and, you know, zero points. But, hey, let's see what we can do against Cincinnati, you know. I mean, yeah, it sucks to give up that last touchdown. But, I mean, throughout the whole game, the defense played good. So, I mean, one one bad play at the end. I mean, it is what it is. The game was kind of over at that point. But, yeah, it kind of sucks. All right. Yeah, and I get that. So, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will be joined by <clears throat> the show's first guest. We have pit guard Blake Zubovic coming on the show when we return to In the Trenches with Jake Cradle and Gavin Bartholomew. Back here on In the Trenches with Jake Cradle and Gavin Bartholomew. I will be stepping out. I am Noah Hiles. I'm going to be stepping back here. And Blake Zubovic will be joining the show for the show's ever first ever guest interview. But before we get started on that, Jake, who is this interview brought to us by? This segment is brought to you by the one place in Pittsburgh where you can caffeinate and create. Brushes and Beans Cafe in Marysville. At Brushes and Beans Cafe, you can enjoy delicious latte, cappuccino, cold brew, and much more while relaxing and creating your very own masterpiece. For more info, visit our website at www.brushesandbeanscafe.com or give them a call at 724-610-3782. All right, so now joining the show is Blake Zubovic. I'm going to take a step back. Fellas, take the interview away. All right, Z, so, I mean, it's been it's been a long, long six, I mean, six years here together. I mean, truly we didn't think we'd be here for six, but, I mean, COVID <laughs> draws an extra one, so, hey, we can't complain. But so my first question to you is be, how how is it rooming with, you know, four – for their defense and offense alignment, and then having a total of, I mean, I think 12 of us on one street over here in Child Street. How, how has that been, and how has it made you feel, like, closer as a teammate and, I guess, togetherness as, you know, a whole whole unit? Well, first off, appreciate you guys having me. Uh, it's an honor. Always talk to you fellas. Uh, but, you know, to answer your question, uh, I think it's been awesome, man. I mean – you got having you guys down here, like just being able to pop into each other's house. Uh, it's something honestly, I think we've all kind of talked about and wished for since we got here. Uh, it's a really cool thing, man. Cause like my, my best friends all live on the same street, either in the house with me or right next door to me. Uh, and, and, you know, I don't, you know, I can't quantify exactly how much, but I know for sure. Uh, it definitely has helped us, you know, grow closer, not just on the field, but off the field as well. I think a lot of the best, you know, chemistry is built off the field uh, a lot of the time. So uh, I think it's been, you know, nothing but positives, uh, really fun for everyone and uh, also beneficial to our play on the field. So yeah, that's that's awesome. That's what I'd say. Uh, I always look forward, you know, being here as a neighbor. My, my big thing is looking forward to like our poker nights or our New weekend. Poker you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thanks, uh, Mac and Zalvez, you know, <laughs> going out there and buying some, buying us a table and chairs. You know, it's been, that's probably been one of the greatest additions of the house is just having you guys all around and, you know, truly just building those bonds. Absolutely. It's off yeah, to you guys. Best. Um, so, I mean, you've been here for a couple of years. So have I, um, you've seen me come in my freshman year. Um, and some of the guys like in other classes since I've been here and what, what do you think has been like the biggest difference, I guess, from like, my freshman year people coming in to like the freshman now and like how do they develop and like their development skills well i'll say a lot of guys uh such as yourself gavin uh that really develop fast it's not necessarily always just physical uh, a lot of guys that just take coaching i think a good example of that right now is uh is a bj williams uh, i think he's done a great job being coachable uh you like guys who listen to coaching don't take it as criticism are willing to accept and change earlier the guys who develop fast. I think throughout all my years, everyone who's, you know, started off, started early, played, uh, has, you know, a lot of success here is all is all come in with like an open mind, I would say. Yeah. Uh, you know, they understand the coach's intentions, uh, such as yourself. And uh, it's pretty awesome seeing you guys all like develop and stuff. I remember you when you came in, you had that musty mullet you on your head. It's better now. It's better now though. I got <laughs> the lines and stuff in it. So, so much better. That thing was crazy. <laughs> but uh, 
<laughs> nah, like uh, it's it's hard to tell, you know, when everyone gets here, who's going to be the best because it's not always the most physically gifted. It's normally the most mentally. So, right. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's just really like once you start to realize like you can have you can accept the role and just just take the coaching, you know, you, you become such a better player and a better feel for the game. So, yeah, no, I definitely agree. Yeah, no, that's that's so true. And kind of add on that, like, I mean, Big Z and that like, you know, like you said, B.J. Williams, I mean, that's a guy that truly he came in in January. And really, we, we knew he was strong. We knew he was, you know, gifted, you know, you know, with talent and stuff. But you truly don't know how good someone can be until they really get in the film room and take coaching and really, you know, want to learn. Like, that's a big thing is like I know he's always coming up and asking Z, you know, because, you know, they play guard and stuff, asking him, hey, how can I get better? What can I do? Like, if you see this look, what, you know. How do you block it? You know, what, what's your thought process? I, it's great to see a guy like that really, you know, come up and really, you know, you know, he played last week and really helped us out. So it's going to be crucial to see his development the next, you know, this next year while we're here and then throughout the future. But uh, so my uh, second question to you, is, you know, you've been you've been on a roller coaster ride here. And, you know, you've you started games, your redshirt freshman year, redshirt junior year. And then, you know, come 2021, 20, you, you step in and you start for us in the championship game at center. You know, you've played left guard, right guard, center. What would you say, like, that's my one, first question. Like, what would you say is, like, how have you done that? How have you been able to, like, really, you know, play every position? And then, too, like, what made you stay after that 21 season? You know, you hear Carter, Owen, Gabe, Marcus are all coming back, and it's like, wow, it's supposed to start, you know? And then you come back, and it's like me and you are in a position battle, and we're splitting time and stuff like that. What What made you stay? Uh, you know, to, to answer the first part of your question, uh, in terms of jumping around, uh, I've always just wanted to do what is best for the team. Uh, I think it's, you know, whatever Coach Ward has ever asked me, I try to do it to my best potential because, you know, it's also going to benefit the team. And as we all know, whatever, you know, however the team rides is how every in, uh, individual's goals are met. So uh, I figured, you know, by benefiting the team and trying to, you know, do whatever I can and that be, you know, play guard, left guard one week, right guard the next, center the next, and AC championship game. Like, don't get me wrong, man. It's about as nerve-wracking as it gets just to jump around week to week uh, at all these different positions, even if it's, you know, little changes right to left. Um, but, you know, but you got to just, you know, do what you're asked. And that's, you know, the same thing as taking coaching. You just got to, uh, you know, listen to your coaches, understand that they have the team in your best interest in mind at the end of the day. And I think I benefited from the versatility of it throughout my career. And then to answer the second part of your question, uh, yeah, man, that was uh, that was not the best Christmas present I could have ever receive. You know, <laughs> right. it, uh, it was like right after Christmas. I was like, man, that kind of stinks. Uh, and it's not because those guys weren't great guys, or I didn't enjoy you know having them around because I do miss them now. Uh, they were all great leaders and great players. Uh, but yeah, it did feel at one point like it was my time. Um, and when that, you know, got pushed back another year and, you know, like you said, me and you, Cradle, were fighting for a position, uh, you know, it got kind of, you know, it got kind of, you know, it made me think for a while, but I never really thought about transferring, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, this is where my home is. Uh, this is where I'm meant to be, I feel like. Uh, and, you know, I trust Coach Forbes and, um, you know, I was able to step in uh, last year from end up starting nine games. So, um, you know, I just... I think that, you know, being here and being around you guys is what made me definitely want to stay. And uh, it's worked out for me. So, um, you know, I'm, I don't regret a thing. No, that's that's awesome. I think and I truly like to add on to that. I think that's what makes our culture here so strong is like we have guys like you, you know, guys that truly, you know, you can say deserve to start, deserve to start mm -hmm. for a long time. But, you know, we've had we've been so deep at the O line position. And, you know, you stick around because of the culture. You stick around because of the people here. And it's it's great to see, like, we have guys throughout the locker room just like that. Like, in this day and age, it's so easy to just jump in the transfer portal, see who, you know, wants to give you 50K or 100K to go play for them and stuff. So it's you – know, that's why I say I, I always appreciate you and, like, Matt Gonzalez, you know, we, we talked to him too about it. And it's like he, he stuck around too. And, I mean, look, I mean, we're all going to have great seasons and, you know, I think our best our best football is, you know, going to be played these next couple of weeks in this whole year, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. Then I feel like just because you guys, I mean, you were bought in and so was, you know, everyone else that stayed. And that just shows credit to, you know, what this program is and that we're a true family. So absolutely. For sure, man. 
Um, and then I'll ask the next question. This one's like off topic. Um, you know, you being a lineman, you know, a little, little bigger. Um, <laughs> I got a question about food. Um, what's your favorite place to eat around Pittsburgh? And, if, uh, and, it, what, and also like, what is like that dish? Like what's like the, the dish you're getting? All right. So I'm going to start off the pizza play, a little pizza joint that uh, my buddy Jay Cradle put me on to a couple months ago. It's called Mercurio's over in Shadyside. That is by far my favorite pizza joint right now, um, you know, in, in Pittsburgh. It's awesome. I get the uh, Bianca pizza, which is like a white pizza. Dude, absolutely unreal. You got to get the gelato, too. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Could have bruschetta too dude yep yep <laughs> that's the good stuff that's the good that's, stuff. uh that's definitely one of my favorite spots uh right now i would say for sure um and then anywhere down the strip that strip's awesome too so yeah there's a lot of good places down there series, really shout out to you know some pit family but sincere is a great place uh pretty much anywhere down there uh but yeah those that's what i would say uh <laughs> that's what i'd say my focus has been recently in the food category. <laughs> nice, man. No, that's a I solid, uh, solid spot. No, that's that, that was awesome too because it was great because I think in the spring, I think before a couple of our scrimmages, that's where uh, Gavin, you came with us. I think the yeah, yeah, Hogs. Yeah. We, I think Phil came with us. Little little team bonding. So I mean, it was nice to go go check out that spot. And the best part is, you know, they have, they have pizza, but like like you said, see like the the ice cream after. Yeah, come on, man. That's that's what we're going there for. That's what we're looking forward to. I mean, that's. That's the good us, stuff. Us oh, big great. guys up front. That, that's what we love. But uh, that's authentic. One hundred percent. Now, now let me ask you, Z. What what's been your like favorite memory here? Like, I mean, we've we've won a lot of games. You know, we've we've had a good time after games. You know, living on the st- same street together. Like, what what's been your like favorite memory as like, a Pit Panther? Uh, on the field, I'd have to say the AC Championship, as I imagine most people would say. Uh, You know, I hopefully want to make another one of those memories this year, obviously looking forward to this year. Uh, But that was an unreal experience. And off the field, just hang out with you fellas, man. I mean, like like you said, poker nights, you know, hanging out, watching games, you know, going out after games like that stuff. uh, You know, that, you know, that's what you that's what you remember a lot of the times is like the people and stuff that you're around. And like we're lucky to have a great group just down here, like we talked about earlier uh but man just hang out with you guys is is absolutely at the top of the list for me that's awesome i love it those are the best times though just hanging out with the True. boys for sure that's, like Especially that's after like a win after a win that's right there's yeah. nothing like that coach six says it all the time man that's right he, that was man. your saturday night <laughs> <laughs> man i'd go back to those days if i could <laughs> yeah no that's that's truly what it's all about you know have a great game saturday and have a good night Saturday night too, but Absolutely. that's awesome. Gavin, you have any more questions for Z? No, man, I'm all, I'm all good. All right, I guess that's where I'll pop in. You like how I did that right on cue there, producer? That was Noah, perfect. Yeah, how about that? All right, so we're gonna we're gonna wrap the show up here, or this segment, I should say, with a game. Uh, we're gonna have different games throughout the entire week by week process of this of this program. Uh, but our first game is going to be called Know Your Panther. So I am going to list describing factors of five different pit football players. Every time we're, I have three facts about five different players. One by one, I'm going to have the three fine gentlemen on this program write down the name of a or the name of their guests, and we're going to see. We'll say we'll uh, we'll say each one is um, worth ten points, and we'll do like a final Jeopardy. What you're willing to gamble for the final one? So we'll start with uh, – all right, we'll, we'll start here because I feel like this one, if you paid attention to, uh, like, social media and uh, everything, you might know the clues behind this one. So this guy, uh, his uh, first clue is per Pat Narduzzi. This guy got hurt in high school. He broke his thumb by fighting an opposing team's linebacker. His second clue for this guy – he, his oldest brother is a fighter pilot in the air force. Oh, let's go. I know this one. <sighs> I know this one. No. What? His, I know this one. I the know. The third it. clue, this guy is a skilled piano player. Oh, that Oh, come that, on. That's easy. That's you gave it away. Uh, that's why it's the first round, Gavin. Just relax. Mm. We're going to get it. It's all that was right. my roommate. That's the only reason why I know that. He was my roommate. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, freshman year. All right. On the count of three, gentlemen, reveal your answers. One, two, three. I'm seeing a lot of Nate Yarnell. That is correct. So everyone gets 10 points. Yes, sir, baby. For Jake, Ga- Jake Gavin and Blake. I'll each get 10. They don't they get a little harder from here. So buckle up. That was that was tough. <laughs> yeah, Jake, before that piano <laughs> one, Jake, Jake yeah, did not have a comment. I was, was lost. Kind of but I couldn't remember who he just told me that. All yeah. right. So for player number two, first clue. This guy averaged 16 points and eight rebounds a game his senior year as a basketball player <laughs> and was wow. all county. This guy, his high school mascot was also a Panther. My third and final clue for this guy. In his second career start, a pit offensive player broke a school record. Wait. You have 10 seconds to write down your guess. Oh, Wait, shit. Say that last. Oh. Okay, I'll repeat the I'll repeat the clues one more time. Sweet. He averaged 16 and 8 his fresh or his senior year of high school basketball. His high school's mascot was a Panther. And in his second career start at Pitt, an offensive player broke a school record. You have 10 seconds to write down a name. Oh, geez. Seven. Wait. Six. Hang on. No, that wouldn't be it. All right. This Hang on, so- Jake. Jake, hold off. Hold off. Don't show them yet. Don't show them yet. What the What do you have written? <laughs> Don't show them yet. All right. You'll Does see. everyone have an answer written down? I don't even know why I'm saying. Yeah. All right. That's Reveal your answers. Wrong. I got no idea. Dude, I'm absolutely Dude, lost. Jake, what do you have? Big baby Big Taylor? Big baby. Solomon. Gavin? I, way off. I put... <laughs> Keaton. Keaton. Oh, yeah, I was. I don't. Well, Keaton Slovis isn't your teammate anymore, so I don't I mean, know yeah, how that but... answer would apply. Jake oh, yeah, is correct. True, Branson yeah. Taylor oh, is the right let's answer. Let's go. That's your roommate. Jake, what are you doing? Jake's uh, Branson's second start was the Virginia Tech game where Izzy rushed for 300 plus yards and six <laughs> touchdowns, breaking the score. That. That's that's what I thought. I knew because I knew Baby was a pretty good basketball player. I but I just didn't know if his second start was. Yeah, his Virginia first start Tech. was that's Georgia, crazy. Yeah, his first start was Georgia Tech. His second start was Virginia Tech. I Very mean, different vibes. Second start. In those, yeah, in those, you. In, not a great first start, but great second wow. start. Yes, 100%. so. All right, we'll move on now to the third player. This player scored 24 touchdowns in four different ways his senior year of high school. So 24 total touchdowns scored through four different ways. This player was a state champion in both the 100 and 200 meter in track and field his senior year. And this player was one of five guys on his high school basketball team to play Division One football. Got it. Bro, All what? Right. How? Actually, I'm not sure. <laughs> Dude, what? I'll give, you, I'll give you 10 seconds, then you have to write down a name. Again, um, scored 24 touchdowns in four different ways his senior year in football, won the 100 and 200 meter state championship. So he's a sprinter. I got it. And uh, then uh, won – one of five players on his high school basketball team his senior year to go Division One in football. So there's, there's two guys that could be, but I'm going to go with this one. Three, I'm gonna go with this two, one. one. Reveal your answers. Jay, I don't know how to – The answer is MJ Devonshire. Let's go, Z. Bang. So Jake yeah. Gavin. 10. Dude, not Bad good. teammate. Z Bad teammate 10. alert. Not good. Gavin that. had some real confidence about himself on the Nate Yarnell one. Yeah, he's he like, man, like, I know him all. He's like, this, is, got, gonna be, this is gonna be my day. I got too <laughs> excited. I got too excited. <laughs> and I'm all right. Down. This next one. This one, sh- mm, we'll see about this one. This guy scored a touchdown his senior year of high school in a game televised on ESPN. This guy was rated <laughs> the number one twenty or the number twenty one defensive tackle. In the class of 2019 by rivals. And this guy claims to have gone over a year where he only drank water. No other beverages for over a year. Who won the team did that? 
You said he was the number one rated D tackle. Number twenty one rated D tackle in the country for the class of twenty nineteen. He scored a touchdown in a game televised on ESPN his senior year of high school. And he claims to have only drank water for over an entire year. No other beverages, just water for a year. Oh, wait. All right. We're going to start the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Gentlemen, reveal your answers. Jules, Jules. I'm car. I mean, I wrote Jules, but Gavin I, I, is correct. It is Carter. Carter. Oh, it is Carter yeah. Johnson. Damn it! I'll tell you that, that the the defensive tackle threw me off. I switched but now, right at the last second. Yep. Now that you remind me of that, that makes sense. Because yeah, yes. he played D tackle. He was fat. He's big. He was, <laughs> he was, he was big. like three thirty. <laughs> yeah, I wrote, I wrote huge. about it today. He he weighed three hundred thirty pounds his senior year of high school. Now he weighs two hundred thirty seven pounds. Good yeah. for him. Yes. So. Very impressive. All right. Oh, so final Jeopardy. So now the score is Jake has 30 points. Gavin and Blake each have 20. So how much would each of you like to risk? I'm all in. Gavin's all in. So Gavin's risking 20. Big Z, you got to go too. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Blake is risking 20. Jake, how much are you risking? I'm risking it all. Come on. Okay. Well, that's all or nothing. All right. Here we go. Okay. All right. This this pair, I, I like these clues the best. This is probably the hardest one. Oh, great. This guy's first offer was from Pitt, and he received it in 2019 after the Panthers beat the Tar Heels in overtime 34 to 27. So that's when he received his first collegiate offer. Second clue, this guy started his collegiate career in the same state where his dad is from. The third clue, this guy finished second in the state in wrestling at the 182-pound weight class his senior year of high school. Well, it's easy. So he took second in the state in wrestling, First offer was from Pitt in 2019. Started his collegiate career in the same state where his dad is from. I'll give 10 seconds. Oh. Nine, uh, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Gentlemen, reveal your answers. Oh, you're right, Jake. God, I didn't have one. I couldn't think of Blake and Jim, Blake and Gavin are wrong. Jake yeah. is correct. Donovan McMillan I forgot. No, took second uh, in the state and in the whipping. Stunned. Yes, at, at 182 pounds, and I think the guy he lost to in both the whippy. I think he lost to the same guy in both whippy and states. He's a kid from oh, wow. McMillan High School. So damn, I knew um, that too. It's yes. Western PA, baby. They can wrestle. Yes, they can, especially in Washington County. They don't mess around there. They don't. So, Whoa, Westmoreland. Westmoreland's good too. Westmoreland's good too. So, <laughs> like, were you a wrestler in high school? No, but my wrestling team was like the number yeah. one public school in high school whenever I was there. Yeah, they were they were a powerhouse back. Yeah. I mean, not too long ago, they still are. Well, I think that's all we got, Blake. Do you have any final remarks before uh, you wrap up your time on the show? Nope, I think that's it. I appreciate you guys having me on. It was a lot of fun, and uh, it'll pit. All what right. Blake. Thanks for coming on, brother. See you guys. Blake, See you. thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. We're going to take a quick break. And when we return, we will have four down territory to wrap up the show here on In the Trenches with Jake Cradle and Gavin Bartholomew. Back here on In the Trenches with Jake Cradle and Gavin Bartholomew. Final segment of the day, which is four down territory. Gavin, who is for who is this segment brought to us by? This segment is sponsored by Rendine Consulting, helping companies, staff, integrate and optimize their technology systems. Call 412-965-5933 for your technology needs. All right. So, guys, four down territory, as always. On first down, we start with a headline reaction. This headline is from 247 Sports. It reads, Travis Hunter's two-way dominance leads to Colorado upset victory over TCU. Guys, uh, not necessarily a headline that I care about, but just the subject of this headline. Travis Hunter, who I'm sure you guys didn't get a chance to watch this game because you're preparing for a game of your own, but 
Two-way player for Colorado. Played 144 snaps last Saturday on both sides of the ball. Caught 11 passes and a touchdown, 100-plus yards receiving. Had a huge interception at the goal line. I'm sure you both saw the highlights. Want to get your reaction, first off, to that effort. Man, I tell you, that's uh, that's pretty impressive. 140 snaps, you know, in a college game. Like, like we talked about earlier, I couldn't even get 50 without cramping. I don't know how that guy got 140. <laughs> so, I mean, that's I mean, it's truly amazing, especially, you know, playing both ways. You know, that's – like, for us, I mean, it's – I don't know if the listeners realize how difficult it is to learn just one side of the ball and develop, you know, your skills and techniques, fundamentals to really, you know, succeed at this level, let alone – do it on offense and defense and special teams. Like that's that's remarkable. You have to be, you know, he's probably at the facility all day, every day, just trying to, you know, get caught up in the defensive scheme, offensive plays, like how to beat this coverage, you know, how to beat this route concept. So I mean, I, I give that kid a lot of credit, and you know, that's you know good for him. I'm sure we'll see him, you know, in the NFL, you know, sooner than later. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy uh, to see. When I saw what he did, I was just in shock. I was like, there's no way he made it. But, um, yeah, I mean, going one way is like almost – it's pretty hard. It's not easy. And to go two ways is just unreal. And to do it at the level he's doing it is just crazy. Um, I mean, I always knew he was making plays at Jackson State. But, I mean, I didn't know he'd be making it at Colorado against TCU in a big stage like that. So, um, but, no, it'll be interesting to see how he – goes about it throughout the season and uh, for like his body and all that, because I mean, that's got to take a toll on his body. You know, is something's, I mean, I hope not, but I feel like something would give out eventually taking that much uh, plays, but I mean, we'll find out. It's, it's interesting. I mean, we've seen some guys at Pitt do it temporarily. Jordan Whitehead got mm-hmm. a couple carries before, you know, really committing full-time to defensive back. And um, who else did it? James Connor did it in a bowl game. If there was one guy on your team who you think, and maybe not 144 snaps, I don't think Pat would ever do that to anyone. But if there was one player who would be capable of starting both ways, who 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 do you think it would be? Man, I'll tell you, that's that's a great question. I have two guys in mind, but I'd say the first guy is Bub Means. Bub Means is like that dude's a dog. Like he he's strong you know he's fast he's explosive and i think he when he first came out of high school i think he was a db he I was think a defensive back at tennessee yeah tennessee yeah. so i mean yeah. he has a skill to play that and you know he's a great wide receiver for us so i mean i would say bub means and my other guy that you know i'd say is Derek davis you know same same thing you know it's cool. lsu for safety and then you know got switched over to the offense side and you know we saw what he did in the the bull game and you know he's in practice he's just He's a freak athlete too, so I'd say those two guys are my uh, guys that can go both ways. Yeah, uh, I mean, I have two. They're both from defense. I'd say either Solomon the Shields. I think he'd be great on offense. Uh, he's a freak of an athlete. Um, what position? I could see him being probably a run. He'd be a running back. Okay. Yeah, um, he's a pain in the ass to block. Uh, the way he can just move <laughs> out of the way, you know, he's so shifty. But um, that, and I'd say uh, MJ Devonshire. Yeah. Um, I mean, he runs route, routes with us in the off season for some reason. I don't know why, <laughs> but uh, he's there every Saturday, uh, like the rest of us, like the receivers and stuff. So, I'd say him. That's I, I as someone who covered MJ in high school, he could have easily been a Division one receiver. I mean, I, him and yeah. Eli were lethal together yeah. in high school. No, that's what I've been told. Yeah, so they were also lethal on the basketball court too. That was a fun team to cover. Uh, we'll move on now to say something nice. Say something nice about Cincinnati, guys. What what are what are some things that stand out on tape about this team? We'll start with Gavin. Um, I mean, like us, they had a pretty easy uh, opponent last week, so it was kind of tough at first to you know really see what they're made of. Um, you know, obviously without any game uh, video, you know, I mean, we know they're going to come in with a hot head. Um, they're going to try and get us out of the jump, but um, I mean, they're they're a big team. They got some big dudes. They got a lot of athletes that uh, can make some plays for them. Um, you know, they're good in the run, good in the pass. But again, you know, they gave up some deep shots against uh, a not so good team. So I think that's where we need to capitalize, and um, I think we're going to be able to do that. No, I, I agree with Cav. I mean, they're they're front seven though. I mean, they're they're really good. They're flying around. They're fast. They're quick. Twitchy. You know, number two, the nose guardies extremely talented you know he's a guy that's on all these watch lists preseason so 
I'm, a, I'm excited for the matchup against him, you know, all day. But um, I, I just think I think their defense is really good. And that's something, you know, we have to we have to really be, you know, on our stuff and really execute and do our jobs at a high level, you know. We'll, we'll see. I mean, it's, it's going to be a fun game. It's one of those games that, you know, I grew up watching. You know, I remember going back in, like, 2009 maybe. Mm-hmm. We lost by a point against Cincinnati for the Big East. But, I mean, it's going to be great just to have them back at home and, you know, get that game going. So I'm super excited. I got to ask you before we move on, Jake, you, Gavin probably has no idea what this is, but do, do either of you know what the paddle wheel trophy is? Did you, did you see? All I heard is that they're not doing it this year. Yes. That's what I've been told. That's I haven't heard. So this, this trophy, Gavin, it weighs 95 pounds. It is 46 inches tall. It is the most ridiculous thing you will ever see. So, (laughs) As someone who grew up in Western Pennsylvania, like Jake, I, I grew up watching Pitt and everything. And I asked people at Pitt's athletic office, like, hey, what's the story upon, behind this? And they're like, we don't know. They looked into it. They told me. And I tweeted about it Monday. I said, you know, a source tells me that the paddle wheel trophy is not a part of this renewed rivalry series. And, man, I mean, it, it went like – crazy like how how much engagement that tweet got and i think it was loved by everyone because of how ridiculous of a trophy it was um (laughs) but i can confirm uh that it is still on cincinnati's campus and it will not be coming to pittsburgh for the game so yeah that does suck but all right guys uh third third down jake and gavin podcast player of the week who are your picks for uh practice mvp this week True. Let's see. Uh, practice MVP. I would say Ronnie Heyman had a good week of practice. You know, that's a guy that I think, uh, you know, had a, he had a great game on Saturday. You know, two touchdowns, I'm not sure how many yards he had, but I mean, that's a guy that always, he's always working and always looking to get better, striving to get better in protection, you know, making the cut, the right cut, and, you know, finding the hole. So I'm excited to see what he does this week. Yeah. I mean, I'd say uh, either Phil or, you know, Kanante. Um, you know, we I feel like we had a different game plan this week with some installs and for Phil to, you know, I mean for everyone just to understand it as well as they do uh going into Thursday tomorrow. I think it's really good. But um yeah, I mean they both had a great week of practice and uh I'm excited to see how they uh perform this week. All right, guys, and we'll wrap up the show. Keys to victory in five words or less. What does Pitt have to do to beat Cincinnati? We'll start with Jake. Um dominate the line of scrimmage. Uh, All right. Win the turnover battle. All right. Fair enough, guys. We got through another episode. Big thanks to everyone who tuned in. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And keep tuning in to the Post-Gazette Sports Now Network for all of your pit sports coverage. Thank you. Take care. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe to our YouTube hot channel. Hot Check out our Apple Podcast channel for more podcast content. Click below for a special deal of 99 cents for a three-month subscription to the Pittsburgh Post Gazette.